In this video, I'll show you how you can create your own custom sized table of contents expand and collapse icons. I've been developing a new template for a new client, and one of the things that I wanted to do was to use the inbuilt table of contents feature. But one of the limitations of the Adobe Captivate Table of Contents feature is the inability to create a custom sized Table of Contents Expand and Collapse icon. If you go into the Project drop-down menu and select uh, Table of Contents, alternatively Shift F10, and then go into the settings option, you can see there is the ability to select a new icon for the expand or the collapse options. But unfortunately, you're limited in size. If I'm not mistaken, the size that you can uh, create is 16 pixels by 16 pixels. So to me, because I'm designing not only for responsive design in mind, but also thinking about smartphones and tablets, I want something that's going to be appropriate for using your fingers rather than the more precise mouse click. So to do that, of course, I need something that's going to be a little bit larger. And rather than 16 pixels by 16 pixels, I've chosen a size of 48 pixels by 48 pixels. And I've created these two buttons here, which are going to be my expand and collapse icons. The expand icon uses a traditional hamburger menu style, which incidentally I found in the Arial font. I didn't think it was available as a character within a font, but I feel fairly safe in using this because of course Arial is a web safe font. And this, ex this collapse icon here is also a character from the Arial font. So I just bumped up the font size to be uh, you know, quite large within this uh, 48 by 48 shape. And I'm using shapes rather than buttons because the advantage of a shape is you can use it as a button, but also set it for rest of project, which I think is appropriate for this particular course. Uh, again, I want people to be able to access these table of contents buttons from any slide within the course. Right off the bat, this one is visible in output. If you take a look at the properties inspector, you can see that uh, it's visible in output, but my collapse icon is actually not visible in output. And I've given them very appropriate names as well. So table of contents underscore open and table of contents underscore close. Again, they're both set up to be used as buttons, and I've written a little advanced action that will allow you to open the table of contents. And this one has an advanced action for hiding the table of contents or closing it. Both of these uh, shapes, I'm using them as buttons, as you know. So I've selected the hand cursor, which helps users have a visual cue that the item is a clickable item. And I've also disabled the click sound, and that's simply because I don't like the default click sound. If someone from Adobe is listening, give us some options there to customize the click sound. I think that would be a nice addition for Captivate 10 or 11 or whatever version we're coming out with next. I've got some rollover effects on these guys here as well. Um, the most important just being a rollover. Again, I'm not overly concerned about this because I am designing with smartphones and tablets in mind, uh, which don't really have rollover states. So I'm not overly concerned, but there is the possibility that this course will be viewed on desktop as well. So I just had a very simple change to the rollover effect. It just changes color. And the same thing for the collapse, uh, we have it change to orange when you roll over that. So that just gives, again, another visual cue, in this case, for desktop users. But this is really the, the simplest uh, solution of all. Uh, what I've done is I've actually replaced the icons that are built in with something called empty.png. 
An empty.png is a graphic file I created 16 pixels by 16 pixels that's completely transparent. There's no content within that icon image at all. And I've used it for both the expand and collapse icon. And simply because you can't get rid of these icons, I'm just replacing them with something that my users won't end up seeing. So again, completely empty icon so that the default collapse and expand icons won't be visible to the end user. And that's pretty much it. Let's take a look at the advanced action for the uh, TOC open. If you go to your actions tab within the properties inspector, you can see this execute advanced action and it's open TOC and we'll just open that up so you can see what's included. It's a standard action, so it's not even a conditional action. Uh, very simple, very straightforward. And I simply called it open underscore TOC and it's using the inbuilt action that's included with Adobe Captivate show TOC or show table of contents. And I simultaneously show the TOC close button. That's the button I created using the character uh, with the double arrows from the Arial font. And that's it. It's two lines of code. Very simple. Let me close this. And I'll just show you the, uh, the similar advanced action that's located under TOC close. And we'll just bring that up right there. So in this case, we use the, again, inbuilt function, the inbuilt action, hide TOC, which will hide the table of contents. And it will also hide itself as well, the TOC close button. And that's it. It's the simplest thing, really. And I think it gives me the ability to use the inbuilt table of contents, which I resisted using in the past because I didn't like you, that you couldn't customize it more. Uh, but I'm fairly happy with how it blends well with this particular template. Let's just do a preview and see how this looks. So here we are on desktop view. If I hover over that, you can see I got a nice little hover effect there. And let's click that. It opens up the table of contents. And there's my table of contents. Again, it's, it's a rough draft at this point. And uh, then I have my own custom collapse icon, which will activate. And I can do this as many times from any slide within the course. And it works perfectly. It even works well with the different uh, breakpoints, as you can see. With the uh, smallest size here being uh, sort of uh, iPhone size, um, you know, it's just... Um, there's no collapse icon because it would ex it would exist outside of the range, in which case clicking on a slide will close it. I'm pretty happy with how this looks, and I think it's going to do quite nicely for this particular template. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was useful or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.